So last time we took a look at the B580, it was paired with a mini PC, specifically this mini PC right here. And we, of course, were using it with the Oculink that is on the front of this mini PC. But that comes with some limitations because this is only four PCIe lanes to work with while this has an eight PCIe slot. So in theory, we are losing some bandwidth here. There are going to be some other limitations. While this is using DDR5 memory, it can only go up to 4,800 megahertz. And on top of of that that clock speed is just at jdex speeds which means that you are getting slower timings than you would if you were using something like xmp or docp memory so i want to compare this setup with a proper desktop setup unfortunately right now i don't really have that great of a setup for testing this see the only real desktop computer that i have right now is this atx am5 motherboard but it has a ryzen 5 8600g that's an apu so it is zen 4 but because of the fact that it's an apu it has less cache than the full regular zen 4 desktop processors do but realistically that shouldn't be too much of a problem here Though, of course, because these are going to be two different test scenarios, I do want to get some baseline numbers of the CPU that we have here versus what is in the mini PC. See, we are talking about a Ryzen 5 8600G, so a completely different platform, completely different scenario than the Ryzen 9 6950H that's going on here. So I just want to understand what the differences are between the CPU performance between these two are, just so that we can have some understanding of how that's going to affect the graphics card as well as the bigger PCIe lanes. This is of course a full 16 lane slot. I'm pretty sure with the APU being there, this drops down to eight though. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to check the spec sheets to know that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it drops down to. And that should not be a problem because the graphics card only supports eight lanes anyway. So we'd still be getting the full capabilities of the graphics card as opposed to the four lanes that you get with Oculink. So let's jump on in and take a look at the CPU. And well, we're going to be using Cinebench R23 to discuss that. This video isn't really focused on the CPU, so I'm just going to go with a very quick, simple test to kind of just show you what the gap is between the two. In terms of multi-core performance, the 6950H does take the lead there, and that should be no surprise. It does, at the end of the day, have two extra cores, but its score of 13,427 is not that impressive if we compare it to the 8600G multi-core performance score of 12,364. It's not that far behind and this has two less cores. And you can see what makes up the difference there when we take a look at the single core performance, which is really what matters the most in the vast majority of gaming scenarios. See, in the single core rankings, the 8600G is the second highest performer in all of my charts. The only thing topping it is the i9-12900K. But in terms of single core performance, the 8600G is even beating out all of the Zen 4 APUs that I've tested that are mobile processors. So the Zen 3 Plus processor in the 6950H is just falling behind in terms of single core performance. Add to the fact that the 8600G is also using noticeably faster memory and you're going to end up in a situation where your overall CPU performance is noticeably better. So not only are we working with more PCIe bandwidth here, but we are also working with a faster CPU and faster memory. So let's see what effect all of this combined has on this graphics card. So the first game that I took a look at is Counter-Strike 2 running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we aren't using FSR at all. And this title ended up showing some pretty distinct differences in performance. The FPS average ends up seeing a 31% increase going from being on that eGPU dock with the mini PC to a full-size desktop motherboard with a pretty low-end CPU in all accounts. But the difference in the FPS average isn't even as significant as the 60 percent increase that we see in the one percent lows and that's really what's going to make a major difference and if you just look at the frame time charts there is a distinct difference there even though we're talking about a millisecond difference of about one or two neither one of these systems is going to give you a bad experience at all but you are certainly leaving some performance on the table with the eGPU setup this is one of those titles that benefits from all the improvements here the increased memory speed the increased performance from the cpu and the extra bandwidth and you can tell by the fact that the gpu is seeing significantly higher utilized across the board here. 
So the next title that I took a look at is a title that a lot of the times really hammers down these mini PCs. So I was really impressed with the performance that I got out of it with the eGPU. It really turns a title that would normally not run on any mini PC into something that was a pretty great experience. But clearly there is still some performance being left on the table here. We are seeing a 23% increase in the FPS average and a 17.5% increase in the 1% lows. Those are some pretty decent improvements happening there just from having this graphics card on a full size board. Though we aren't seeing as big of an uplift as we were with Counter-Strike 2. But we again do see that the B580 in general is seeing higher utilization on the desktop. So clearly there is a limitation happening with this graphics card when it's just on four PCIe lanes. So the next title that I took a look at is Hitman World of Assassination running at the ultra quality settings and we are using XCSS at the ultra quality settings but we don't have any ray tracing features enabled. And this title ends up seeing a pretty modest 16% increase in the FPS average but the most significant uplift is the 32% increase in that 1% low and that's pretty major. The 1% lows were surprisingly low on this title with the eGPU to the point where even though we're getting a 75 FPS average it didn't really feel all that great great. So the uplift that we're seeing in that 1% low is really going to end up making the experience much better. So the next title that I took a look at is Rainbow Six Siege, a very, very popular esports title. This is running at the ultra graphics settings and we aren't using any kind of upscaling whatsoever. This one showed a 19% increase in its FPS average, which is a pretty solid uplift, though not really all that important once we're talking about FPS this high. But it also showed a pretty disappointing 17% increase in the 1% lows. In both of these setups, this was one of those titles that were was showing some pretty odd levels of performance because realistically, if you're getting a 186 FPS average, 1% lows of 56 are surprisingly low. And the same carries over for getting 222 FPS, but 1% lows of 66. Six. That's a pretty significant fluctuation happening there. And unfortunately, it's going to make this a pretty rough title to play. And the next title that I took a look at is Black Myth Wukong running at the high graphics settings. And we are using XCSS upscaling a render resolution of 66%. And this was the title that showed the least amount of difference. And I even checked VSync was not on or anything like that. In both scenarios, the GPU is seeing full utilization. The power usage is very similar between the two and in general both give a great result so the first time that i tried to play marvel rivals on the b580 with the eGPU, i could not get the game to launch at all it kept crashing as soon as i would launch it turns out this is a problem that the game has with intel gpus or at least with the b580 i can't confirm if this is happening with their other cards but at least with the b580 having any kind of overlay enabled ends up leading to that kind of crash so i I couldn't have MSI Afterburner running or the Riva Tuner overlay to show you the real performance numbers. That works perfectly fine on both NVIDIA and AMD systems, it's just an Intel problem right now. The game does have a built-in FPS counter and here you can see the difference between the two, but realistically you're not going to get much useful information looking at an individual FPS counter. All I can tell you is that there was not really all that much of a difference between the two. Neither system was really performing to the level that I would expect in this title, and that's a little disappointing to see, especially considering that we are using XCSS, though not at a very aggressive setting i didn't really think we would need that considering the performance we were getting on other titles but this one definitely was not hitting the levels that i would have liked to have seen now helldivers 2 was another one of those oddball titles at the medium graphics settings with the ultra quality scaling setting it was getting a weirdly low fps average and one percent lows with the eGPU. a graphics card like this should not really have been performing like that and it was very clear by just how low the utilization was that there is some kind of problem happening here. And I was more curious to see more than anything if that would carry over to the desktop version and that clearly has not been the case. As you can see by the much higher GPU utilization and that is directly leading to a massive difference in performance. 
where we're seeing a 70% increase in the FPS average and a 68% increase in the 1% lows. An effectively identical increase in both the FPS average and 1% lows. So there was a severe, severe bottleneck happening here, and I can only imagine that in this specific title, the bottleneck had to have been the PCIe. The CPU difference between these two titles is not going to be enough to make up for any kind of gap like this. I'd be very curious to see if this is also the case with other graphics cards at around this level of performance, though unfortunately at this point I don't really have any other graphics card that is at this price point and this level of performance. I've kind of sold a lot of the excess parts that I have and I didn't really think I was going to end up picking this up, so I'll have to look into that at another time. And the final title that I took a look at is Gears Tactics, running at the Ultra Graphics settings. In here, we also end up seeing a 26% increase in the FPS average, and a more substantial 36% increase in the 1% low. So not as substantial of a difference as other titles that we've looked at, but still a pretty significant one. And though both systems are able to play the game perfectly fine, if you do have a high refresh rate display, you're clearly going to be able to take Take advantage of that more if you're using a full-size desktop and again you can see that the utilization of the gpu just is not as high on the eGPU setup so at the end of the day, what is the conclusion here? Well, there are some very clear compromises that are being made going with an eGPU setup. In some of these titles, you are really sacrificing a lot of performance. But outside of Helldivers, you're not usually going to see such a drastic difference that it would lead to one game being playable over the other. But there's definitely some clear differences going on here. And I tried to check and see what could be causing some problems. I made sure that Rebar was enabled on both systems it does seem like the mini pc supports that feature and it is enabled when the gpu is plugged in the intel driver says as much so it could just come down to the fact that it does not have enough bandwidth to properly feed this graphics card one thing that does become pretty apparent across the vast majority of the tests that i did though is that there are some inconsistencies in terms of gpu utilization whether we are on the eGPU or we're on the desktop as you can see here with Spider-Man Miles Morales that I'm just playing and I noticed that the GPU utilization was nowhere near 100% even though we are at the maximum graphics settings the only thing we don't have enabled is ray tracing. Now I'm not 100% sure what is causing these issues because at this point we do effectively have a full eight lanes to work with. It's going to be interesting to see where Intel goes in the next year when it comes to driver updates for this, because there are clearly things that are still broken that have not been fixed after all these years. But hopefully the popularity of this specific graphics card is going to push Intel to finally fix some of these driver issues. I'm sure part of the problem that they've been having is that nobody wanted to bite the bullet on an Intel graphics card, so they have a very limited pool of people that are even reporting bugs. So if you have a B5 80 graphics card i do recommend that you report any issues that you're having to intel because that is going to be very valuable information for them to start to fix a lot of this stuff they have an opportunity here to have a much wider pool of people working with them to fix these issues but this is pretty much the only shot that they have i don't think that people are really going to put up with driver issues for another generation unless they go aggressive with the pricing and Intel is already suffering because of the price point of this graphics card. It's just not a high enough price for how big the chip is for them to really start to recoup a lot of the cost of this. It's not a high margin item by any means. So it's going to be interesting to see where Intel is at in the next couple of years, especially with the current financial issues that they're having across the board. With Pat Gelsinger leaving or realistically more being forced out, I'm not so sure what the state of Intel graphics is going to look like like in the near future, at least in terms of the desktop. I'm sure there's going to still be a focus on mobile graphics since that's still a very big mover for Intel. But if desktop graphics don't start to pick up in sales, I don't know how much more we're really going to get out of them. But I'll catch you guys in the next one.